On Tuesday night, hundreds of people gathered at a church in Orlando, Florida, to mourn the 49 victims of Sunday's attack on an LGBT nightclub, the deadliest mass shooting in modern U.S. history. Following the massacre, President Obama called for the reinstatement of the assault weapons ban and measures to prevent suspected terrorists from obtaining guns. One of the two guns used by Orlando shooter Omar Mateen was an AR-15 semi-automatic assault rifle, the same style used in the massacres in San Bernardino, California, Aurora, Colorado, and Newtown, Connecticut. We begin today's show in Washington, D.C., where we're joined by Georgia Congressmember Hank Johnson. On Tuesday, he and other Democrats on the House Judiciary Committee signed a letter to committee chair Bob Goodlatte to consider legislation to reinstate a lapsed ban on automatic assault weapons. In the letter, the lawmakers write, quote, "'Make no mistake about it. Our nation is under attack. We are under attack by the scourge of gun violence on our streets and in our homes on a daily basis,' unquote. Georgia Congressmember Hank Johnson, welcome to Democracy Now! Talk about what you're calling for right now. Yes, it's a pitiful shame that here in America at this time it's easier to buy an assault weapon than it is to board an airplane. Uh, you have to go through all kinds of security and have all kinds of ID in order to fly. But in order to buy, all you need is an internet connection or a uh, entry into what's called a gun show, where you can buy from an unlicensed firearm dealer, and you don't have to go through a background check. And so that's called the gun show loophole, and it allows these assault weapons to proliferate on the streets of America. And we're seeing a proliferation of, um, of homicides and mass murders that are committed with these high-capacity assault weapons that were made and manufactured to kill people in mass numbers quickly. And uh, so we need to replace the ban on assault weapons that expired in 2004, and we need to reinstate that ban so that we can start get a ha getting a handle on uh, the proliferation of these assault weapons on the streets of America. And, Congressman Johnson, why specifically was the, lap was the law allowed to lapse, uh, and what has been the, the, uh, the, the lineup in the battle to get it reinst reinstated? Well, it was the pressure on uh, lawmakers by the National Rifle Association, which represents gun manufacturers and gun retailers. Uh, they have contributed so much money, largely to the Republican Party, or members of the Republican Party. About 83 percent of their funding goes to Republicans for Congress. And with that kind of influence, with that kind of money in politics, uh, it has resulted in the NRA being able to uh, prevail when it comes to common sense gun uh, regulation. They support no effort to control firearms in the hands of anyone in this country. And, and, and so, until we can break the back of the NRA lobby and get that dark money out of politics and do something about campaign finance reform, we're going to have these anom anomalies that continue to uh, exist in America, and people are dying as a result of these policies or the lack of policy by Congress, and it's something that we need to change. There's a joke going around online, and I hate to joke on a day like this, but it says, can I get two boxes of Sudafed? Sorry, by law, you can only buy one at a time. OK, then just the one box of Sudafed and these seven guns. Well, it's a fact of life that one can go into a gun show and purchase unlimited amounts of weaponry and ammunition and high-capacity clips, no questions asked. This is the 21st century. This is the year 2016 in America. And after repeated mass murders at the hands of persons wielding assault weapons, when will we wake up and take action? Just simply doing a moment of silence every time something like this occurs in Congress has appeased some lawmakers. Some of them think that that's all that uh, we need to do. But I think the American public are starting to wake up. They want us to take action. If, 
if we're to do our jobs, we must uh, take these kinds of situations that, like that which occurred in Orlando and use them to galvanize public opinion and public pressure on these recalcitrant lawmakers who are in the pockets of the NRA and, quite frankly, are afraid to move without permission. Uh, it's time to act. It's time to act now. And it's not just these mass murders. There are just instances of homicides throughout the country, um, single people, uh, two people being killed at a time. We can't forget about those. It's easy to look away from those uh, that are occurring every weekend in cities and in towns throughout America. People are losing their lives to gun violence. Guns are ending up in the hands of people who have no right or should have no right to possess them. And so, without any kind of regulations, we will continue to see this influx of weaponry onto the streets. We'll see misuse of that weaponry, and innocent people will lose their lives as a result. And so, Congress has a responsibility to stand up and do something about it. Uh, Congressman, I wanted to play for you part of Donald Trump's remarks on Monday following the Orlando massacre. When I'm elected, I will suspend immigration from areas of the world where there is a proven history of terrorism against the United States, Europe, or our allies, until we fully understand how to end these threats. We cannot continue to allow thousands upon thousands of people to pour into our country, many of whom have the same thought process as this savage killer. Uh, Congressman Hank Johnson, your, your response to, uh, to the uh, presumptive Republican uh, candidates for president remarks? Well, conveniently for Donald Trump, he wants to forget that this individual who perpetrated the mass murder in Orlando uh, is an American-born American citizen. Uh, and most of the mass murders that have taken place in America since the removal of the assault weapons ban in 2004, and in fact, before then, most of the perpetrators have been American-born. And so it's wrong to try to demonize refugees, people trying to escape um, mass murder, mass incarceration uh, in their home um, countries. It's wrong to blame those people for the scourge of violence that is happening in America.